Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here with you this week. Uh, thank you for inviting me into your homes via video conference, video camera. Um, this week for Sunday school, our lesson is going to be on Zacchaeus, which is kind of a, a common, beloved story. I like it anyway. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and, and give it a start. Remember from last week, we had Faith 5 which is share, read, talk, pray, bless. If you didn't have an opportunity to look that up on Google, then maybe take some time and take a look at it. It's kind of a cool thing, kind of show some videos on explaining how to go through everything. Uh, but if you don't have the time for that, that's okay. Just go ahead and model and work right with us and we'll go right through the steps on our own. This week, you guys, parents, grandparents, whoever's there, you guys get to be the Sunday school teachers which is kind of fun, kind of cool. Take some time, enjoy this opportunity to do that. Uh, and we'll see you guys when you guys get back into church. But for now, let's go ahead and just jump right in, I think, right? All right, so let's go to Cher. Uh, do you want to start with us? Yeah, so my highs and lows this week are, the first is the high, and that was going for a walk this week. We haven't had a chance to do that very much, but it was warm, and so that was a lot, that was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. My low still has to do with sleep. I'm still very tired, so that's my low. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for me, my high is sort of related to our talk. Um, being at home, being kind of, you know, you don't want to say quarantined, but sort of in your house. Uh, we have had a lot of opportunities to talk, Maddie and I. Kind of reminds me of when we first got married. We seem to talk all the time, and it's been really nice to kind of sit down and just be able to talk a lot uh, on our walks when we're able to talk and um, we've been able to do that a lot this over this past week or two couple of weeks uh, that's been really nice um, the low is uh, still trying to figure out the new routine the new normal what does it look like i think me being home actually even kind of messes with bella's schedule a little bit so that throws things off and uh, that's been really tough for kind of the whole family. Uh, I think it kind of plays a little bit of a part into why Maddie's even struggling with sleep maybe a little bit. Uh, the little one kind of waking up at different times. So that's kind of my low. Uh, so uh, right here, we'll take a moment to go ahead and uh, have you guys pause your video. And I want you to take some time in your family, whoever's there in the room with you. Uh, if no one's there in the room with you, go get some people, talk to them. And... Uh, Talk about your highs and lows. Just share those amongst each other, pause the video, and then come on back. Welcome back, thanks. Uh, I'm glad that you guys had the opportunity to do that. Let's jump right into our next step, uh, read. Now for read, uh, we're gonna go right into our Bible. Uh, I've, I've got the Lutheran Study Bible, Maddie's got the Faith Alive Kids Bible here. Uh, we're going to ask everybody to open up to Luke 19, uh, verses 1 through 10. So we'll give you guys a little bit of time to do that. Again, that's Luke 19, 1 through 10. We're talking about Zacchaeus today. Oh, if it was a race, you'd beat me. I've got fancy little markers on my Bible. Oh, yeah. All right. Here we are. Oh, one more page. Okay, uh, do you want to read or do you want me to? You can read. All right, thank you. All right, starting at Luke 19. He, this is Jesus, he entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, 
And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Again, this is one of my favorite stories. But uh, let's take a moment. I'm going to have you guys pause. I want you to talk amongst yourselves with anything that uh, might have popped out at you as you were listening to that. Maybe something you notice. Uh, there might be a note in your Bible. We've got, you know, in the Lutheran Study Bible, there's like half text and half notes. Uh, so take a look at some of those. Uh, and then when you come back after pausing it, we'll go ahead and share some of our conversation uh, with you at that time. So go ahead and pause the video now. And welcome back. Uh, I'm, I hope you guys had enough time to kind of sit there and chat. Um, but uh, Maddie and I, we were just kind of chatting uh, as well. And uh, we like to look at these notes anytime that we go to lead a Bible study or just kind of study the, the word. Uh, these notes here can be really helpful. Uh, so, kind of interesting stuff here. Um, Zacchaeus, of course, is a tax collector, but not just a tax collector, a chief tax collector. Uh, this has made him very wealthy, but also uh, not very well liked. Uh, the tax collectors are well known for being kind of cheaters and liars. They steal from people. Basically, they'd come in and they'd, they'd say, oh, you have to pay more in taxes than what the taxes are actually required. And then they would just keep the extra money. So uh, definitely kind of cheaters, liars, thieves, um, well-earned reputation uh, for being kind of, well, you know, sinners. So uh, that's who Zacchaeus is. Jesus is walking through. Uh, this is Jericho. Yes, it's the same Jericho that Joshua fought the battle of, right? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Uh, but... Um, but that's the same Jericho. So Jesus walking through. That's where Zacchaeus is. Climbs up on a sycamore tree because he's short, which is kind of funny. Um, the kids might get might relate to that pretty well. Sitting in worship services and they stand up and they're about half the height of all the adults standing around them. And mostly what they see uh, is you know the back of whoever's standing in front of them. Uh, so they might relate to that kind of well. So that's kind of fun to to bring up. Um, but Zacchaeus, Jesus goes right up to Zacchaeus, knows exactly where he is. And says, hey, I'm going to your house today. Um, always very interesting point that Zacchaeus, sort of curious, uh, kind of wondering who Jesus is, but not really interested enough to like go up and talk to him. Uh, instead, he's kind of like going to spy on him a little bit. He's going to come over and try to try to get up on a tree and kind of look at him and get a look at him. But that's kind of all he wants. He's just sort of curious. And Jesus says, no, I'm going to go to your house today. Um, which, and then Zacchaeus, of course, receives him gladly. Um, but Jesus kind of comes, finds Zacchaeus. Um, so that's one of the notes. Maddie had some, an interesting thought about that earlier. So, so I thought it was fascinating how much the story of Zacchaeus relates to our own salvation story. That... You know, we might be curious, or maybe we're not, um, and it's Jesus who came to us. You know, we, we weren't the one that went out to him and said, hey, I'm going to have you come to my house. It was Jesus coming directly to him, like, like in our baptism, he just comes directly to us and says, hey, I am coming to you. And immediately there is that change in Zacchaeus. Uh, he immediately says, of course, you can come. He's joyful now. He is excited. He is like, you know what? My life is changed. I'm going to try to atone for the things that I did. To say, hey, I'm sorry. Because um, he has this forgiveness now. He has this redemptive life in Christ. Um, so that's how I, I saw the story. I, I really thought it was a great relation to our own salvation story. Yeah, absolutely. I think... You know, one of the things I share often with our our older uh, members, of our our older children and youth members of the congregation, uh, is that you know in our own life story, it's always it's easy to think of ourselves as the hero of our own life story, but in actuality, we're kind of a lot closer to the villains actually, um, and or at least working with the villains. Uh, and Jesus comes in and 
not only does he does he save us from ourselves uh, and the power of sin, death, and the and the devil, right? But um, kind of actually sort of changes us to be good guys, uh, which is just kind of a really neat thing. And that's a common kind of story element, but just kind of keeping that in mind, like, oh, we're not the good guys. We're not the people who are trying, like, we're not the heroes. We're not the person who comes in and saves ourselves. We didn't do anything. We, we're actually the bad guys kind of working against Jesus uh, until he comes and saves us. Um, yeah, and then once we get saved, right, then we kind of go back and forth between being uh, Zacchaeus before he was saved, and then we jump over to all the way over to uh, the, rest of the, con- the rest of the members uh, of the community, who are grumbling that Jesus is going to go hang out with sinners, right? Like and they're any better. Yeah, like they're any better. Yeah. Um, but I think the main kind of the, the central point of this that I hope that you can get to with your kids is that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, right? The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Uh, if we can keep that in mind, if we can get our kids to understand that, the Son of Man keep, came to seek and to save the lost. That, I think, is our central point for this. He didn't come for people who are already righteous as if those people exist. Uh, He came instead for the people who are the villains in their own life story. He came instead for the people who are who are lost. Um, Right? Jesus is the hero. He's the guy that came in and saved everything and rescued us. So, if you can kind of paint that picture for your kids, that'd be Fantastic. That's that's that would be our Sunday school lesson for today, I think. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, pray. Now I want to take a moment and have you guys pause to pray amongst yourselves. So you remember those highs and lows that were talked about earlier, and I want you to take a moment to pray about those and pray a prayer of thanksgiving and praise for the highs, and also pray for God's help uh, or protection or or guard, you know. Uh, guidance in whatever your low is. So take a moment, pause the video, pray amongst yourselves, and then come back and we'll end with the Lord's Prayer and a short blessing. Okay, Uh, I'm glad that you guys had the opportunity to pray together like that. I think that there is really nothing better for a family to do than Uh, to pray together, and to read the Bible together. So really, really powerful stuff there. Let's go ahead and close with the Lord's Prayer, uh, and then I'll do a a blessing as well, and we'll call it a day. All right, so um, please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. All right. So this week's blessing is going to be coming from 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. Uh, And again, when you guys try to do Faith 5 in your own house, uh, you know, on your own, then you can choose whatever blessing you like. There's a whole bunch of them in here, uh, but this is just one I wanted to use for today. So 2 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 14. So, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.